recording has started. Let me switch back. So in today's topic, we'll be actually discussing around enterprise gen AI. I'll try to walk you through the things that we are going to learn throughout the training during our next two months. So it will be an exclusive training. And whoever are very serious about enterprise gen AI, business gen AI. So for those guys, this will be a very beneficial training going forward. So what we will be learning today's session will be actually break down the different topics and try to understand why and what are the things that we are trying to learn here, including the baseline concept like the transformers, uh, neural network, and so on. And also as because maximum of us probably are from SAP background, how SAP actually projecting this particular Gen AI and infusing these things into their core products. Those also will be actually saying, and from a technology perspective, technical as a technical guy, what are the things that we can do around this particular SAP Gen AI? Especially, we will be looking into the Gen AI SDK part, and also we'll be actually seeing how this AI core, AI launchpad, and other things will actually look like. We'll go through the things in our detail training detail session. And also we try to learn some other baseline things like for, uh, uh, foundation models, like different, different uh, commercials and commercial and open source LLMs. We'll try to compare this as well. And also there are different challenges for that we need our interventions to actually do certain things like this fine tuning and rack techniques. Adapt this LLM according to our domain knowledge business domain knowledge and also there are certain other tools and technologies like vector db and embedding technologies and also langchain framework those are the baseline things we're trying to understand in today's session mainly we'll be focusing on some use case scenarios or other things that we'll be learning and also we'll be ending up with some of the demos which is a reflection what are the things that we'll be learning in our subsequent training sessions okay so these are the things we will go through and uh, I think this is not so clear for you. So that's the reason. Let me do one thing. Let me go to my whiteboard and try to explain why, what and how we will be doing this enterprise gene AI, especially in this SAP era. So let me switch back to my whiteboard. I will be away from my video for some time because I'll be using this device for whiteboarding. Share this particular screen now. Stop sharing. Okay, so let me go to my drawing board. The question is why we are so bothered about this uh, Gen AI LLM things right, that we are trying to figure it out now. So, for any enterprise, what happens that for any enterprise, for any for any enterprise, there are mainly three pillars, right? So the pillars are the people, product, and the process. I'm going a little slow because I want everyone to settle down. We also see whoever are joining. I have to admit as well. Oh, 
someone is admitting sims thank you then if we take this sap as an enterprise solution example we generally have seen there we have different modules right like we do have modules for inventory management we have modules for supply chain management we have modules for procure to pay management we have modules for order to cash we have modules for customer relationship management and on top of everything as because we are doing business definitely the center point of attract, uh, attraction is the finance and finance also have modules like a, account receivable account payable so when we understood this thing so when we understood this thing so we are very much accustomed with all those kind of modules on top of those three pillars people product and process now to improve this particular different business segments and modules there are there, there are different different improvement areas right so let me just try to explain it from here like we have improvement sections like the improvement of the process user experience we can improve the automation or automation things like the workflow automation and while improving this user experiences processes and automating the processes we will have chance to generate more revenue right so to do all those kind of things the center point is nothing but the data correct so data is the center point the information and so far we have seen what are the things that we can do out of those data like we have seen how to actually build applications on top of the data like right? generally we do have data in our databases right and on top of the database we generally build our applications different different applications using the program the computer program the logical computer programs so logical programs logical programming and coding through which we are able to improve the business processes and do different different digital things like the digital transformations out of this data right but the thing is it's not only about the structured data so to do business we generally have different other formats of data throughout our organization throughout our enterprises so what are those other kind of data so other kind of data can come from internet other kind of data can come from email other kind of data can come from different chat channel other kind of data can come from different social media channel and not only those things but also we do have different other unstructured data coming as word document coming as text file coming as pdf coming as json format coming as xml format coming as audio format coming as video format and so on coming as also image right so this is the this is the nature of our business because every business every domain is different and let's imagine that you are dealing with vendors you are dealing with customers you are dealing with different different people 
So everyone do their business in different ways. Let's imagine that people are sending invoices in a PDF format or image format, or people are querying that your customers are querying some things through email, ordering something through email or chat or any other medium. So those are unstructured data. So throughout our different business processes, we'll see those are unstructured formatted of data. Right? Like this internet, like this email, like this chat formatted data, like the social media, Facebook, and Twitter, and so on. So on top of those data, so far it is not so efficient. Our logical program is not so efficient to actually look into those kind of data and make sense out of it and improve the business processes, automate the business processes and generate more revenue. But we do have, we do have the techniques, technology for a long time with us. Those are AI ML technology it was there for a long time with us. It is not a new technology. It is there for a long time with us. Okay for 10, 20 years. And those AIML technology can actually interact with those unstructured data and different source of data and can make sense out of it for different analytical scenario, for different prediction scenario or different reporting scenario, automation scenario. Those were so helpful for some time, okay? But those were not 100% or like accurate or it was not fulfilling all our business requirements. Why? Why I'm saying that? Because many of the scenarios, it happens that it was not aware of the context. Maybe it is aware of some neural network and it was trying to help in different ways, but it was not fully helpful. So that's the reason. So we recent in recent area for the last two years, we have this NLM technology, okay? Large language model which is actually creating a lot of buzz nowadays and for obvious reason, of course, right? That we'll try to understand now. So what is the obvious reason? So then we'll go to our next layer. What are the obvious reasons? So let's imagine, let's, let's, let's take some example to understand this thing. Let's imagine that you are, you have some, or let's imagine that you are searching in Google and you are searching something like, like you are searching like mm, one second, right? You are searching. Yeah. So you are searching like calories in apple or vitamin in apple so calories in apple and other person is searching revenue of apple where you are searching both the things how actually google is understanding for both the scenario we are talking about apple but it will give you the appropriate contextual result based on your query. So the first one is like the fruit and second one is the company, correct? How so it is now contextually aware, context context aware. It has the contextual awareness and this particular context awareness technique is very much prominent in this LLM model. Because this particular LLM model is trained on, let's imagine the GPT, okay? So let's imagine the GPT model. So it is actually trained on all the internet-based data, which is available, open, and now it has all the kind of like human like knowledge and also contextual knowledge to understand different things. And this particular GPT is also just for your information. We'll go through all those topics in details is based on transformer. So based on transformer, we have this GPT model. 
So not only GPT from OpenAI, but also we have different other models based on transformer like Google Bird or Beta Llama and so many other models. So which has been trained with billions of parameter and trillions of trillions of tokens. So what is this parameter token? Those are also we'll be learning in our subsequent training sessions. So now as because it has all those kind of like knowledge and information, we are able to actually give the different prompt or instructions. And it is able to give us the appropriate result. So I hope as of now, everyone is so much accustomed with chat GPT application. We are in our day to day life. We are every day or every hour we are using chat GPT. But there are certain drawbacks with this particular GPT, which has been trained with Internet data, open data. Especially for our enterprise use case scenarios. Because we do not have that domain knowledge. Not have the domain knowledge. The domain knowledge means your specific business process is different. Your specific business data is different, which is not available in the internet. And that's the reason this particular organization like OpenAI, Meta, Google, they are not aware of your processes and data because they have been trained their models in the from the open open data sources. Uh, so as because it does not have the domain knowledge. So there we have to play our role. So we can apply different techniques and technologies and deploy those. Application custom application. That that we can build on top of this GPT, this foundation model, LLM foundation model. So those are the techniques, technology. Those are the things we will be learning throughout our training session. So just to give you a high level. Context. What are the things that we will be learning throughout our training sessions? So in most of the scenarios, the 80% of the business use case scenarios that we will be seeing those we can do. Uh, we can we can infuse the domain knowledge to the standard or foundation GPT model using the RAG techniques. Retrieval augmented generation. So if you do not have any idea about of any of the things here, so don't worry. So we'll go through from the very basic level and we'll advance our knowledge, advance our skill to that level so that we will be actually able to build enterprise grid application in the corresponding enterprise solutions. So not only this retrieval augmented generation technique, so these are the different techniques. Okay, so let me just mark it here. So these are the different techniques that we can apply, like the RAG. And not only RAG, but also there are different other techniques that we'll be applying, like few short learning. You should learn it. And also we'll try to see some of the use case scenarios where we can actually try to modify the weights and biases that we generally call as fine tuning. What is this weights, biases, fine tuning, rag, future learning? Everything from the scratch level we'll actually try to learn. First of all, throughout our training sessions, and not only theoretical conceptual learning, but also in each unit we will try to do some kind of hands on on top of it for the initial one month. And then the second month we will try to implement and build the actual. Business use case scenarios. OK, so those are the scenarios that I will be explaining in some, in some, in some time. So I was talking about the fine tuning. So. These are the different techniques, but what are the different tools and technology that we can use to build this particular techniques? Right, like what are the things that actually you need to learn? Let's understand that as well.
So the technology that we will be learning now, technology. So the technologies are learning the vector engine, the embedding techniques, right? Vector engine. The vector engine will be useful while we'll be going for the rack techniques. We'll be saying how we'll be using the embedding and storing the data in rack, and on top of that, we will be actually building our custom use case scenario. So this is one of the technology. And then we will actually learn LangChain is as a framework. If you see these are the foreign term for you, don't worry. Okay. I am repeating again and again. We'll see all the things from the very basic level. And also we'll be actually looking into different agentic agenting technology. And to do all those things, the baseline programming or coding that we'll be doing throughout our training is mainly the Python. And again, we'll also learn Python from the very basic level. So don't worry if you have any experience in ABAP, JavaScript, Node.js, or any other programming, I believe you will be able to learn Python in a few days. So these are the technologies, techniques, and different other things that we'll be learning. And after learning all, so uh, learning only learning these things and applying the things, uh, use cases will not be enough. We need to now apply those development or buildings to some platforms like AWS, like Azure. Like GCP. And if you are in SAP, you will be more interested to deploy the things in SAP BPP, especially AI core. Right? So these are the things we will be learning throughout our training sessions, and some of the things I'll try to actually accustom you in today's session as well. Any questions so far out of this particular whiteboard drawing? If you have, we can have a little discussion and then I'll move forward for our next some other baseline techniques and demos. Uh, Partha, one question. Will we use HANA vector engine in the training program? HANA yes. cloud vector engine? So whichever the things that you are seeing it here, let's imagine that you are seeing this. Let's say, let's put this thing once again. Uh, let me take some other, yeah, this one. Let's, I'll come to that HANA vector engine, but let me just uh, come from the bottom part. Let's imagine, so this, the, the LLM models, okay? Let's start from the LLM models, okay? So we'll be learning the different LLM model technique. Or different uh, baseline models like the GPT will be learning Lama will be learning Meta LLM sorry uh, Meta Lama and will be learning the uh, Google uh, uh, Google Palm okay and so on so multiple LLM that will be learning uh, in terms of RAC techniques in terms of embedding techniques also we'll be learning different different uh, techniques different uh, different models how to actually use those models and do the embeddings. And also from the storing perspective, we'll be also learning not only HANA DB as a vector engine, but also we'll be learning the PG vector, the PostgreSQL vector engine. We'll be also learning some other prominent vector engine that the whole world is using, like Python, Chroma, and PS as well. For all those layers, we will not untouch any of the things that will be useful for your real time implementation project. So, so those are the things will be you you see how and why we need to learn all those things instead of focusing on a particular thing. Okay. So why we are 
uh, why we will be learning all those techniques that we will be seeing in today's subsequent slides itself. Uh, uh, Parda? Will you... yeah, sorry, please carry on. Yeah, uh, so will you also uh, learn how to custom train the LLM model and also the security part of it? Yes, of course, like as because we are trying to deploy the things in SAP BTP AI core. OK, so the. Major reason why we are doing these things is because of security and not only these things, because there are other things I was talking about the open source models, which we can actually deploy to local machine. Let's imagine your own machine or own private VM virtual machine that we will be also seeing those things like we will be actually using the Llama model, which is a offline model. We do not need any internet connection for that. So why we will be doing those things because of the security enterprise needs security. Of course, we'll be seeing all those things. Yeah, Bharda, uh, uh, actually, the, there is a concept called embedding, right? Embedding is part of LLM or RAG? Uh, yeah, so of course, like this much curiosity is very good. OK, so LLM is the baseline. OK, so LLM on top of the LLM techniques, we do have different base models, foundation model. We call it as a foundation model. Why we are calling this as a foundation model? Because it has vast amount of knowledge okay so entire world knowledge okay and on top of that as i was talking about why we need rag because we do not have the domain knowledge like the business domain knowledge specifically inside this gpt model inside this llama model inside this birth model so that's where we will need the, the rag and that to do the rag uh, to do uh, store the uh, to, to use these rag techniques we need the vector engine why we need the vector engine why we need the rag and what are the technology that we'll be using the embedding? So those are the things definitely we'll be seeing in detail. And also I'll try to actually give you some level of idea in today's topic itself. Okay, okay. And one more thing, like uh, earlier we earlier sessions like we discussed about open AA, right? So uh, as per my knowledge, like open AA is not uh, uh, up to date, like it has some past data, not the current exact current data uh, to train the models or to uh, uh, get a response. So coming to this, like, uh, is it the same or it's an up-to-date uh, response we, we do get? I think uh, this is the reason I am here to help you, okay? So as because you have done some research, this is also good, okay? okay. But this is the reason, this is the reason we are saying that we'll be doing tag, we'll be doing fine-tuning, we'll be doing few short learning. Because okay. we do not have the domain knowledge, we do not have the up-to-date knowledge. OK, got it. Thank you. OK. OK, so now let's move forward. Let me just unshare this particular screen once again and. Share my original screen. Okay, so so far I hope you are getting some sense out of it. Now, uh, now, so this is not a entirely new technology, right? So this technology is evolving from long back. Okay. Uh, started like the it started like the ML and AI. It started like the statistical ML model. Then it had the neural network. Then recurrent neural network, and then the new technology is based on transformer model, especially the decoder part of the transformer model. So I hope like uh, you understand these things in coming sessions, just to give you. What are the things probably you will learn? So just the, this is the reason I just highlighted it. this are the slides. Okay. Now, as because you are more and more interested in the SAP Gen AI 
things, right? So let's move ahead and see what are the things that we can do in terms of SAP. So let me go and check the things. So SAP, uh, we are talking about the SAP Gen AI SDK, right? So let's say SAP Gen AI SDK Python. So if you check this particular thing, SAP has come up with this AI core SDK, okay? So as you know, SAP always tries tried to actually make the thing simple for developers so that we do not have to bother about so many technologies and techniques rather focus on building the solutions business uh, uh, against the business problems so that's the reason this is also another wrapper you can imagine is built on top of plan chain and different other different other base models okay foundation models so gradually you will understand these things okay so these things uh to to actually use these things you need to use pip install all those things why this pip install if you are aware like we were using npm install while we were developing the things in node.js in our cap projects here we will be using the pip install to install different packages so this ai code sdk is nothing but a package okay. so it has lots of different methods sorry lots of different functions and libraries which will help us to build our business genai application easily okay so uh, one of the things that we can do we will be seeing it now okay probably i will just show you some of the basic demo and to just make you aware what are the things that we will be learning like like Okay, so anyway, so we'll come to this part sometime later. Uh, first of all, let's uh, let me just show you uh, the AI core part and AI launchpad. If you have not seen those things before, let me practically show you how those things look like. Okay, let me go to my free tier account. I mean, I have the as you go account actually. Free account. Now, okay, let me go to another sub account. And I already have configured those instances and subscriptions to speed up the things for today's demo. So we do have this SAP AI Launchpad. This is a subscription, SAS sub, sub, uh, SAS sub, sub, subscription, and we do have the instance, the AI core. So AI core is the actual engine. The front end of this particular tool is this AI launchpad. You can imagine it like that. And I already attached that AI launchpad to AI core. This is the reason I will be able to see the inside thing of this AI core through the AI launchpad. Okay. And this is how it will look like. And 
here you can see we do have different options for administration. We do have option for ML operations, machine learning operations. So just to give you some idea that SAP is not giving you the direct option to build the machine learning model. Okay, so it is giving you the option to do the ML ops. Okay. Like if you wanted to use any of the model, large language model, like this foundation model. Okay, so you can see we do have this at the foundation model readily available. Okay, from open source, from um, from the open AI and Google Vertex AI. Okay. So we will we'll learn all those things and also if you wanted to actually use some of the open source models out of uh, all those open AI and Google, we can also deploy those things. Deploy in the sense we can connect from this particular launch pad. Okay. So these are the uh, these are the foundation models that you can see it here and on top of those foundation model we can build our applications as we were seeing in our slide so that is the reason i was trying to actually show all those baseline things right like this uh, gpt baseline models and on top of that we will be doing these things drag two shot fine tuning using vector engine embedding lang chain agent and the basic programming language is Python, deploying it at the end in this SAP AI code. Okay. So I started from the bottom to top, but while we will be going through the actual training, we will be coming from top to bottom. Like we will be starting from Python programming learning, we will start, uh, start understanding this vector engine, all those embedding techniques, lang chain. And the different other techniques like within the lang chain that we'll be seeing in today's topic as well. And then we'll deep dive like this two shot, drag, fine tuning, use different different base uh, line model, okay? The foundation models and build different different business use cases for different modules like finance module, like OTC module, P2P module, okay? So if you have seen our curriculum, we have actually attached almost 10 different business use cases that industry is actually looking for those use cases okay we'll go through this one so these are the baseline models and to use those baseline model we need to configure this first like sap is trying to like uh, check what are the models that you are using how much you are using based on that they will also charge you right and the chargeability is very high compared to the other platform because SAP is giving the option to readily integrate, orchestrate the things, this LLM models with your business applications or business data. And not only that, SAP is taking care of the security part. That's the main reason. And at the end, we can, uh, we can do that, uh, we, can, we can deploy it as well. Like that, uh, I have deployed three of the model, and after the deployment, we can use those models. Like we have, I have used the Falcon model. I have used this embedding model, right? Text embedding at a zero zero two. That is from the OpenAI, and I have also used GPT three point five model for different different scenarios, which I was building for this particular training session, right? So this is how you can actually access the different other model. SAP is saying if you are accessing through me, it will be secure okay, because SAP is taking care of it. And not only SAP, SAP is tying up with Google, SAP is tying up with Azure. Like whenever we are trying to use GPT model 3.5, either we can go to the OpenAI, that GPT, OpenAI, right? And we can create uh, our instance and we can create their API, uh, we can use their API using their API keys and all. But instead of that, if we go via this Azure, the Microsoft, so that will be most, much more secure. So that's what people are claiming. So this is how, and at the end, uh, let's say that 
these are the things probably I can show it to you some of the things. Guys, so these are the things whatever I'm showing is just to warm up the things, okay? It's not something like if you are uh, saying you are not able to understand, that's absolutely fine because we'll be starting from the very basic level, starting from the Hello World Python program itself. And gradually we'll increase our uh, knowledge base and speed. So don't worry about it. So you can see I have used this Gen AI Hub. Okay, so this is nothing but our um, SAP BTP Gen AI. And I have used the mod, uh, I have used the standard libraries that I was just trying to show you, show it to you. Okay, and let's imagine that I wanted to go for this thing, or probably I will try to show you from the documentation itself. Let me just see where I have put this documentation. I put this documentation, okay. So this, are, this is also important thing that I will thank you. I'll try to explain. But anyway, so uh, so it is also very simple. Like we are first of all importing different libraries, and then we will actually use the different functions out of that particular library that we will be importing. Okay, from this Gen AI Hub that I was just showing to you. This is a wrapper that SAP has built on top of LangChain and different foundation model. So let's say that uh, this prompt element. So what you can do, let's imagine that you wanted to actually do these things. Like let's imagine that uh, you are importing this uh, wrapper library and on top of that, so there are different techniques like the completion, cat completion, okay? There are different roles also like uh, the system, user, agent, and different rules also we can also use in different different functions to accomplish our different tasks okay so i'm just thinking like how much i should go in today's session uh, so that i should not confuse you guys uh, but whoever has also some understanding uh, some research previously for those guys probably it will be helpful to navigate uh, Let's imagine that this is the. Mm, let's imagine that. Okay, I will use this one. Okay. So here I'm saying. So I was talking about the role, right? The system role and user role. Okay. So this is kind of like the prompt engineering techniques that we'll be using in our uh, training sessions as well. Okay. Like in this particular thing, what I'm doing is I my intention is like okay, so actually SAP has given this particular example. I'm also taking the same example, uh, which was the example they are also trying to teach, um, just for the simplicity purpose. So here it is saying like uh, act that you uh, you are Stephen Hawking, okay, and then as a user. I'm just giving some context. Like, tell me, what do you think of time travel? Is it really possible or not? How you conduct any? Uh, so, have you conducted any, exper any any experiments? Okay, please answer as a, as short as possible. Okay. So, as because this large language model, especially if you take the GPT model, it has vast amount of knowledge. I wanted to concentrate some of the domain knowledge. Like I'm just trying to go to the domain knowledge thing, right? So here I'm saying, uh, hey GPT, now instead of you try to find out the result, whichever I will be asking from all over the knowledge that we have, instead of that, you just focus on that you are a scientist, you are the you are the Stephen Hawking, and try to find out the result. I to find out the answer that I am asking. Okay. So in this particular scenario, this is the deployment ID that I'm using. What does this deployment ID mean? This deployment ID means like it's ends with the C40. Actually, I have used this C40. Okay, that is nothing but the GPT 3.5. Okay. So I'm not using open AI if you are aware of this open AI APIs and all. 
I am using the instance of the OpenAI that I have created in the SAP AI Launchpad. And also I'm using the library that SAP has created, the SDK, okay? GNAI Hub SDK that, I am, uh, that SAP has created. So with all those techniques, SAP is making sure that your data will not go beyond your uh, beyond your boundaries. Okay, so your data will be secure. So uh, this is a very simple thing, like kind of like toy thing. So just I'm I will execute these things. Okay, so how to execute these things? So the execution part is also very simple. So you just do like Python. Python, what is that? Prompt LLM. Prompt underscore LLM dot five. LLM. Okay, so it will try to execute those things uh, uh, based on our input, like act as Stephen Hawking. This is the context, and give me the answer, whatever that I'm asking as a user. Okay, and use the GPT three point five servo model. And uh, uh, internally, it is actually using GPT 3.5 turbo model via our Gen AI Hub SDK, SAP Gen AI Hub SDK. Okay. So it is now giving the answer. Time travel is theoretically possible, but has not been proven. I have not conducted experiment on it. Okay. So this is also a similar example, like SAP is also trying to explain. So actually, Stephen Hawking has done the experiment, but as because this 3.5 turbo GPT 3.5 turbo doesn't have that particular knowledge, it is not able to give the appropriate answer. It is giving the hypothetical answer, right? So to overcome this sort of problem, domain related knowledge problem, or like those cut off related knowledge cut off related problem. So we can do the rag. Okay? So you can imagine like rag is something like you will give all the data, like all business data in any format, be it in text format, in in uh, in text file, PDF file, any other file, HTML file, or whatever file it is, and give it and store it somewhere. Okay. And then Whenever you will be querying out of those stored data, it should give you the appropriate answer. Now let's imagine that your organization has huge amount of data, and if we wanted to store it somewhere, normal relational database may not fit into this particular use case. There are a couple of reasons for that, because these are huge amount of data, and these are unstructured data. For structured data, we have different techniques that we know in our normal relational database. But for unstructured data, it is very hard to actually find out or search through all those textual information and find out the contextual result out of it. Okay. So contextual result means like I was taking the example of this Apple, right? So nutrition in Apple and revenue of Apple, right? So those are the contextual information. So although if you just search like control F and cite the Apple in a document, probably you will not find the right answer, right? But with the help of generative AI, it has the capability of understanding unstructured data and also capability of generating the human-like responses that's the technology we'll be using going forward throughout our training sessions. Okay. So rack techniques that we'll be using. Okay. So not only that, not only this GPT model, also we can use different other models like this Falcon and so on that we'll be learning in coming days. Okay. And probably, uh, probably, so let me just go to this. Okay, so let me just give you some other uh, example just to make you understand the things in terms of 
in terms of these things like vector db and embedding okay so before going to the uh, explanation of vector db and embedding so embeddings are like the things i was talking about the vector db right so it was very much impossible if you will store all this information in the relational database why those are the things i will just try to explain in 5 10 minutes because this is not a dedicated session in dedicated session we will be have it entire 3 4 hour discussion entirely for this embeddings vector db and so on right so we will learn in depth things and we will practically do those hands on as well so just exam take those same example okay like this revenue of apple okay and calories in apple and uh, in this in this era probably we are, tr we are we are we are forgetting the things like computer don't understand textual things okay computer only understand numbers right so uh, whenever we are typing some things in this chat gpt application itself we are thinking probably like okay so it has the knowledge in the textual knowledge itself but in reality the knowledge is not stored in chat gpt backend engine in textual format rather it is stored in numerical format right so you are asking the things in textual format and then those textual format informations will also have to convert it into numerical format because the actual things also stored there in the backend is also in numerical format and then there are certain techniques like similarity searching algorithm like poisson similarity and other similarity searching algorithm which will be able to search both your input data that is the uh, that is converted from textual information to numeric information or whatever the uh, baseline the foundation model they also have the informations using the biases as uh, using the parameters and using different different parameters right so they also have information in tech in in numerical format now if using some similarity algorithm will be able to actually search the actual output okay the 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 desired output okay so those are the things we will learn but before that like what is this like this embedding okay so if we wanted to store this revenue of apple okay or calories in apple okay or nutrition uh, in orange or employees in samsung okay so this is also a hypothetical example it is not the actual thing okay but the the theoretical it is same okay like whenever we will be storing those informations in a database using the different embedding techniques so embedding technique is also coming from the foundation model itself okay so with using some foundation model will be will be able to convert those revenue of apple this string calories or in apple this string into numerical format so first of all what it will do is whenever we will pass those information to some foundation embedding models it will convert it will try to see what are the different parameters it can apply for okay like the uh, we can see like the uh, is it related to phone is it uh, the location it has like stock information revenue information is it a food or uh, is it related with calories or so on okay so when we will be storing those information the uh, it will be storing like okay so you can imagine now revenue of apple and employees in samsung you can see the numbers are almost same the because it is related to phone yes and it is related to location no okay zero probably okay this is just a representation and it uh, has the stock information yes and the revenue probably this is just the revenue number actually okay so apple has 82 billion or uh, probably samsung has 76 uh, billion something like that and is it a fruit no zero and uh, is it a calorie related topic that is also no okay but if we see calories in apple and nutrition in orange these numbers are almost similar okay like uh, is it related with phone no Uh, it is related with location no okay is it uh it does it have the stock information no okay uh revenue information no is it a fruit yes and both are fruit category and does 
it does have calorie information. So apple has calories and orange is also having calories. So all these characteristics based on different different characteristics parameters, it will store different numericals or different uh, textual informations into numbers converted into numbers and then those numbers will be stored into some placeholder and the placeholder is nothing but the vector DB. And I was talking about we will be learning chroma DB, we will be learning pine cone, we will be learning HANA cloud vector engine, we will be learning PG vector. That is the post gray extension of vector engine, uh, uh, post gray database vector uh, extension actually. So we will be storing those numerical information to vector databases. Why we need this special kind of databases and why like the different startups are actually raising millions and billions of funding because of this thing, because this is an amazing technology. Why this is amazing? Because it can store the information in this kind of numerical format. And there are actually really two reasons, okay? Let's imagine you are storing this into normal text, uh, I mean normal field. It is very hard to find all those things uh, if you go to go kind of like linear search, right? So the indexing part will be efficiently managed in this vector database, okay? So we'll go through all those details in our dedicated session, the indexing part, okay? That is the crucial thing, index. And as because it is kind of like uh, and after retrieving uh, all those informations, you also have to do similarity search on top of it. So that's the reason we'll be actually uh, learning different techniques. Okay, so I am probably skipping some of the things because of the time constraints and uh, unnecessary to explain all those things in today's topic itself. I think that should be fine. If you have more questions, probably you can uh, reach back to me or we can discuss end of this session itself. Okay. So then uh, probably I was talking about, okay, so this LLM models have uh, mainly three challenges, like it doesn't have the domain knowledge. And many times if you not feed your domain data, it will hallucinate. What is this hallucinate? That means it will give you wrong result. It will lie in their answer, okay? So instead of saying, I don't know, it will try to find out the minimum uh, similarity, whichever the knowledge that they have, okay? So to avoid those kind of things, and also it is not up to date, even with the internet data as well, okay? So these are the main three challenges. That's the reason we'll be learning this instruction tuning, we'll be learning some part of this fine tuning because it is not that much required and mainly we'll be learning this rag but because 70 to 80 percent of industry the enterprise use cases will fall under rag scenario okay so in this instruction tuning also we'll try to learn this future learning and in today's demo also i'll try to show you one of the demo from the instruction tuning using short learning one of the scenario that i'll try to actually demo you in in a short while using the rack scenario okay guys so and as i was calling i was talking to you so there are different different foundation model like open ai gpt3 4 and google palm beta llama 2 llama 3 those are also very very prominent open source llm models probably it will be become a mainstream model for uh, this industry use case scenario because those are offline model not have to connect to any kind of internet so and those will be more secure in terms of enterprises so people will move forward to learn and to apply those kind of models going forward so that's the reason we will also deep dive into those models those foundation models as well and just to give you some idea like that there are different different models what are those open source and what are those paid and uh, who are the providers uh, quality speed parameters and so on okay so what are those parameters what are those uh, tokens those are things probably we'll try to 
try to learn but but uh, if we just try it, I, I just give you some of the baseline thing uh, how it looks like the parameter probably you have some idea now like what are the parameters means like when i'm saying uh, like this uh, when uh, gpt4 is saying that it has been trained with 1.76 trillion parameters you can imagine those parameters like this okay. it's not entirely true but for some idea so like this they have four point as so a 1.76 trillion of trillions of parameters okay and now what is tokens and probably they have trained with trillions of tokens what what does this token means and why we should actually learn this token techniques i mean token uh, we should have this token knowledge as well because whenever you will be actually trying to find out what are the base model that you have to use for your particular use case that is uh, that is suitable for your scenario okay uh, uh, Based on a different cost model, also you have to also decide, right? Not only from the parameters, the highest parameters, the highest token model, but also the cost perspective, right? So, like I was trying to show it to you. Let me just see. Yeah, let's say, like this one, the uh, AI core calculator from SAP itself, how they are setting up the pricing. If I just go to this, so it is talking about the token. So if you do not have understanding of token, it is saying for each thousand token, they will charge you 0 0.0048 dollar. Okay. No, sorry, this is the capacity unit. Okay, and based on the capacity unit, like it is also almost equivalent to the dollar value. So uh, that is the reason we should be understand you should be able to understand these tokens and so on as well okay so for that probably let me just try to give you some more idea about the token as well okay so let's say that uh, and for the for different different base model foundation model the token is also different okay like uh, like here uh, i'm saying that who is uh, jensen okay so it is having three token. You can see it is calculating three token. If we are using the open AI model, okay, especially the 3.5 and GPT-4. So it is actually taking each word as a single token, okay. Like this, uh, you can try to calculate how much token you need uh, probably for your input and output while you will be actually using the different foundation models for your use cases. Okay, anyway, let's move forward. Now, uh, and why we are so much uh, thinking about this SAP Gen AI SDK because it is actually giving you different wrappers. Okay, as I was talking about the LAN chain and different foundation model, we now have some idea about foundation model and why we are doing these things and what are the techniques that we'll be actually applying on top of these foundation models. But, with only using those rag, we will not be able to solve our problem. Because in our business scenarios, so it you'll face different other challenges. Okay. So different other challenges in the sense like it is not only about a particular document. It's not only about calling a particular API. It's not only about going to a particular database table. You will have to have multiple data sources. You have to have go to multiple data sources, multiple APIs. Correct. And sometimes you also have to jump from one model to another model for complex business use case scenario. To orchestrate all those things, we have to use this Lang chain. Okay, so Lang chain is the orchestration mechanism. That is also behind workflow mechanism for SAP Gen AI SDK. Okay, so Langchain is also very very important to understand. We will also have one or two dedicated sessions. That means like five to six hours we'll be spending in this Langchain, understand this Langchain concept, do the hands-on practical hands-on, and of course when we will be actually implementing those 
prominent 10 business use case scenario, you will see all those techniques like land chain, RAG, vector uh, DB, and, uh, and embeddings, uh, uh, the future learning, and so on. Okay. Inside the land chain, also, just to give you some kind of like idea or keyword, probably you can remember or you can forget, that's absolutely fine because we have dedicated session as I was repeating again and again. So there will be lang speed, which will actually help you to actually build your application throughout. How? Okay, let's understand it. Instead of just in this particular slide, okay, let's go to this lang chain. So if I go to this Langkin documentation, you see they have multiple components. They have also have their own architecture, right? So Langkin Core, Langkin Community, and then Langkin LangServe, LangSmith. Okay, so LangSmith is something like if you wanted to debug while you are developing something or you have some issues, like why your LLM is not triggering, why you are not getting the expected result and so on. So it has the capability to go and debug the things. Okay. And what is this LangServe? LangServe will have the capability to give you the REST APIs out of the uh, out of the engine. Like you will be building some application. It will it will it will give you the API out of it. So that you can use the particular API. Probably you can use the API from your CAP application that we have learned in our earlier sessions. Correct. Right? So and so on. And also you can give some input from your CAP application, RAP application, or whatever the application, just the API call. So understand just calling of APIs is not learning Gen AI, right? Just try, just just think about it, right? So so there are many other things, right? And then there are different other things like okay so how you will be giving the instructions to the model so those are the things we will be learning using this langchain community and so on okay uh, with different different tools okay i think that's fine as of now and then um, there are different use cases says probably if you are interested more i will try to explain like in which other domain that we'll be focusing on like ap the account table account receivable Okay, the vendor invoices and different different other use cases that will be actually implementing our different solutions in our training sessions. And understanding hugging phase. So it is also very important apart from uh, these things like this. We have we have seen this uh, AI core, SAP AI core, and so on, right? SAP AI core and so on. Uh, uh, and also we have seen some of the Things probably like uh, platform. Right? These are the things also will be going forward, learning again and again in depth way. Yeah. So, like the different things, like the text generation techniques uh, and. Uh, Calling the functions and embeddings, like all those different capabilities. Okay, so we will try to learn fine tuning, embedding, function calling, text generation. Okay, and uh, while doing these things, so uh, there are uh, different other options like. Anyway, so we'll be learning all those things, and not only those things, probably I was just talking about that we'll be learning. And Lama models using will be using the Ulama actually. Okay. So Ulama is another framework that we'll be using to actually use run uh, the foundation model within our on premise and uh, build our applications. And I was talking about this thing slide, right? So let me just hugging here, right? So Hugging face. So, so why why we are bothered about this hugging face? Because uh, when you see like you need certain open source model to fulfill your different use case scenarios, probably you can come here and instead of building by your own, probably you can try to find out 
uh, if someone else has already built some kind of solutions around it or not, uh, you can search it from here. Okay. So, like uh, instead of building custom program in your SAP, you should first follow that if someone if SAP has already given the standard solution, standard applications or not, immediately uh, this particular Hugging face platform will give you the options to actually find out if something is already there or not. Okay. Fine. So let me just move forward and uh, give you some uh, two uh, last demo. Like so, let me just go very quickly. So one of the demo that there probably we are using here the. Here actually we, we are using the embedding techniques and everyone will be using the embedding techniques and drag techniques so here you can see so we will be building different chat solutions especially which is taking the pdfs as input okay so let's imagine that you wanted to actually find out different information from the hr policy document okay or let's imagine that you wanted to compare to invoice document all those textual informations that how you will be actually actually uh, building your custom applications uh, you custom use cases okay so for those scenarios we'll be using this embedding techniques right and rack techniques so in this particular technique in this particular uh, demo probably i'll just go quickly like uh that pdf So this is the thing our team has developed. Okay. So this is just for demo. Probably will not will not teach this particular thing in in our training session. Just to give you some idea. Something else. Okay. Okay, so let's say that I will be giving any of the document. Okay, let's imagine that I will be giving this document. So this chat with a PDF application. And at the same time, I will I will go and open the vector database that we have used for this particular application. That PDF. So the UI is not so good, but try to see. Anyway, so here actually what happens that I uploaded this document and uh, this document is here and out of this document I can ask any question. Okay, so uh, like what are the skills? What are the skills that they have in SAP? It will give you the answer. From this particular uh, document. Okay, so you can see all those skills. It is actually crawling from this PDF document and giving the answer. So how it is able to answer these things? Okay, how it is able to answer these things? Probably I'll try to explain. So what it does is like whenever I uploaded a document, it actually goes and Store the informations as embedded. I will not. I will not go into much detail. Okay, so definitely we'll have the detailed sessions. So it stored all those informations in a vector in a numerical format. Okay, in our vector database, in an embedding format, and then whenever I am asking anything, it is also converting my question into embeddings like those numerical format, and then it is trying to do the similarity search, and based on that, it is trying to get the 
relevant information out of the document and then it is again going to the llm to actually generate the human like responses like here i'm getting part the has skill in several areas like this okay so this is a baseline thing probably we will be actually understanding in almost every of the use cases not every use cases but 70 to 80 percent of the use cases okay. so and and just i was trying to uh, help you how it store the informations in the database okay so how it stored the data information so it actually divided the data into different different chunks okay and then it stored the informations in a vector format like this so if you see it actually takes certain part of the information from the document okay and then it store the information in this vector this numerical format so this is a long numerical format okay long numerical format and after that whenever i am asking anything it is also internally converting my textual questions into a numerical format then it is trying to search the similarity from the different different chunks and i can give the different parameters like the top k and so on so that i can get the relevant chunks out of those <coughs> data store let's imagine there are 10 chunks or 20 chunks but whatever i am asking it will actually pick up relevant top k like top k if i will put k equal to 3 it will search and uh, extract top 3 relevant chunks out of this particular database and then it will actually throw it to llm so this is another reason so instead of actually giving all those vector data like all those big informations uh, at the same time to llm and llm has token limit okay that's the reason we are actually first of all in first step finding out the first relevant chunks and then throwing it to llm and trying to figure out the appropriate result out of those three chunks itself okay so it is not only overcoming that token limit of different llm what is the token limit and all so why i am actually giving uh, that much detail or something like that if you are saying okay i don't understand these things and so on, so many things so so on so don't worry because uh, i think like some of the guys uh, who has already done some of the research 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 on this topic so for those guys i'm just giving these things otherwise for you you just try to grab all those kind of terminology and going forward definitely we'll go into deeper mode so so that's the reason we are not giving all the information to llm but the relevant information to llm because of one of the reason is like the token limit okay you cannot give all the huge amount of information to llm okay there are maybe like total limit of 3000 something like that the token what is token so that we have also seen in our uh, previous uh, in some uh, in our previous section side right? so whatever now so then the llm will try to find out the relevant information uh, it using different technique like the simulate search and then it will try to give you the appropriate answer based on the question this is how it works okay guys so this is about this first demo and the second demo probably another demo that i wanted to actually give it to you okay like in sap we do have 100000s of table i think like we do have more than 2 lakhs of tables the structured tables in sap so what about like if we wanted to focus on some domain like let's imagine some otc or ar or something like that and if we can build some solution out of it instead of building a programmatic approach uh, application like uh, fetching the information from the db using database connect do the program in abap or node js or something like that and build apis and build uis and so on what about that i can if i can actually build applications directly the llm applications on top of those data stable itself it will be very easy for us right so 
for that scenario probably i will also take another example so i will take another database uh, i will take another uh, vector that i mean normal uh, database so that is like post database so so this is a, a cloud solution where i have my post database hosted uh, okay so i will let me just go to the dashboard and chat with sap and let's imagine that you have your tables like these are uh, sales information table like order related tables we do have order tables we do have we have customer tables employee tables office tables order details tables okay like uh, and an order table okay so like order at this order at this happens on these dates and the status the shipment status and so on okay and uh, who is the customer and so on so every table has their own relation with each other right we have this product tables and so on so now building applications on top of this how we can actually build applications using llm on top of this uh, structured data like this table data tabular formatted data right so for that i am trying to give you another demo here so uh in this particular demo probably i'll just okay so i have uh, uh this file in this particular uh, demo what we are trying to do is so in our llm so whenever we are trying to search different thing it has the capability to generate sql okay uh, SQL. So if you are asking, give me the SQL query for this. Okay, like okay, how many customers have an order uh, have an uh, order count greater than five, or what is the highest selling product, whatever it is, right? Based on our data. So the the LLM model, the foundation model can give you the SQL information. Now, how we can orchestrate these things to our own databases? For that, we can use Langchain. So here also we have used Langchain, and Langchain has the SQL agent. Langchain has the SQL database chain, and also Langchain has few short prompt templates. Okay. So what is this few short prompt template? It will actually help you to overcome the hallucination. What is this hallucination? Let's imagine that if this uh, particular query, if I'm just asking. I do not have the proper data, uh, proper table itself in our database. It will it, still it will try to answer me in some way, which is a wrong, wrong answer, right? I don't want it to get those kind of answer. And also, I wanted to make our application as perfect as possible. So for that, I can also give. Let's imagine that that in SAP, so our database table names are different, right? BVAC is sales order header table. Okay, VBAP is sales order item table. Okay, Mara is material table. But probably this foundation mod model don't have the knowledge of SAP related terminology. So that is another reason. Probably what we can do is we can do few short learning so that what we we can we can give certain examples to our model to make them understand. Whenever some user will ask about sales order, it should actually query VBAK VBAP like that. Okay. And also those kind of like few short learnings, how it will be actually matching when actual user will query. Again, the vector database embedding things will be coming into picture. Okay, because as I was saying. LLM don't understand textual things. LLM only understands numbers behind the scene, right? So everything should be converted into numbers. So again, those future learning also we have to embed into a vector database. And whenever user will be querying anything, it will be actually hitting the lang chain, and it will be hitting the SQL agent with the help of LLM. It will try to generate the query. Also, it will try to see. If there are any few short learning or not, if, or if there is some future learning, it will try to prioritize those few short learning 
try to follow those future learning and I think this future learning will influence the result. And then whenever it has the proper structured query, the SQL query, it will go to the actual database and try to find out the appropriate result. And whenever it has the appropriate result, then we can reformat it and give it to the user back. Like if we wanted to give the user back in a normal textual result, we can do it. We can give the result in a JSON format that also we can give to the user. Okay, so I think that's it, guys. But let let, let me just uh, try to try to run these things as well. Okay, so that you will have a certain idea as well. Uh, so Python. So this particular application is built on also those Langchain, LLM, Front Engineering, those uh, vector engine embeddings, and so on. Okay, and also we have used Open AI. Okay, as our foundation model. And uh, the output that you'll see in some time, I'm using extremely. So what is extremely and all? So we'll actually learn those things in our initial days. If then, like the hello world Python, we'll gradually learn the Python. Then for the user interfaces, we'll be learning how to build applications, user interfaces, especially for AI machine learning applications, user interfaces using extremely. Okay, if using few lines of code, it'll be able to actually get this kind of output. Okay. So this is also another chat application. Okay. So let's imagine what are the questions that I can ask. Uh, let's imagine that okay, how many orders? A simple question. How many orders you have? How many orders? Have? Okay. So how many orders it is trying to mm, so it is now Trying it, it is actually uh, try, it is going to the lang chain and this lang chain using the different embedding based model. It is actually it is actually converting my string into the numerical format and whatever the things are stored, the future learnings are stored in my databases. It is also trying to match all those things and also trying to come up with the relevant queries and then it is going to the LLM again. And and generate the actual final query and then going back to the actual relational database and try to find out the result. So we have a total of eight orders. So let us check whether we have the eight orders or not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we do have eight orders. So it is actually giving me the appropriate result. Okay, guys. So I think that's all. Okay, no, not that, that. That's all. So I I have to give some more idea. So what are the course curriculum probably? So uh, again and again, I am trying to repeat. Like, don't worry if you are getting overwhelmed with all those terminologies, techniques, technologies, and so on, because the world is moving in that direction. If you will not learn these things, someone else will grab your job. Okay, for sure. Because let's imagine in SAC you are building your SAC report. In ABAP you are building your ABAP report. Uh, just I'm giving some example. Okay, so going forward, those things should be converted into LLM solutions. Okay, so if you are not doing, someone else, whoever have the understanding, the knowledge, the the experience, they will do it. So this is the way it is very important for everyone. To understand and learn these technologies. <laughs> so we'll start from very basic as I was talking again and again, right? So we'll start from the basic Pythons. Okay, even you can see the data types and all those very small, small things. As because it is very important to understand the database as well. So that's the reason SQL basics is also a little bit will be understanding. I know you are already aware of the SQL, but still we ever don't have any idea about SQL. And then <clears throat> Before jumping into this LLM technologies like all those vector engines, semantic search, LLM, and Langchain and so on, we have to have our baseline clear. Like, what is this AI ML basics? Like, what are those <coughs> things I was talking about, right? Like, like the statistical model, neural network, and then gradually we'll be going to the transformer and GPT models. Right? 
okay so uh, we'll, we'll we'll start with this regression classification and prediction different different small small use cases and do hands on okay nothing will be theoretical everything will be hands on so that we will understand clearly as a use case perspective and of course like you should be familiar with git you should be familiar with how to build the end to end application using the streamlet that i was showing to you how to build the the user interfaces that is also based on python so and then we'll try to learn the NLP because the large language model is the advanced version of NLP, right? So we'll also try to learn all those kind of things like what to wig and all those TFIDA and so many little, little things. Uh, and then we'll jump into the, the generative AI fundamentals. We we'll start from the transformers, we'll go into the different foundation models, GPT-4, Mistral, uh, Llama, different open source models from Hugging Space. We'll also try to implement different small, small use cases. Although in this in this four week, okay, I'm saying it is a more conceptual theoretical thing, but for each topic, we'll be doing hands-on. We'll not build end-to-end -end use case in this first four week. We'll do the actual use cases, the 10 prominent use case solutions in our last four week. But in the first week, when we'll be learning the things in a conceptual way. There also we'll do different different small small unit wise hands on, and also we'll do like different things like embeddings, vector engine uh, for different different databases. I was talking about HANA database, there's Chroma DB, PG vector, and so on, and LangChain fundamentals like how to debug the things, how to use the Lang Lang split, Lang curve, and so on, LangChain community of course. And then the 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 different other local LLM models because it is also very important going forward. That is the majority of the industry that is asking question. What about the data security? So you can omit that particular doubt in a single go if you are running the model locally in your on premise. So. Everyone will be claiming, like Microsoft will be claiming, I am wrapping the open AI GPT model in my Azure open AI. And then SAP is saying, I am altogether wrapping everything in my AI core. But at the end, it is hitting the internet. But if you will be able to actually use the local LLM, even there is a there, there is no question even to connect to the internet. And whenever you are not connecting to the internet itself, there is no question about the security as well. Security will be inbuilt itself, right? Using your firewall. So, and then the next four weeks, as because this is a two month course each weekend, that means every week, two days session. And then next month, the last month, four weeks will be actually going through all those industry use cases like like the building different different chatbot like the customer customer uh, service chatbot okay or you can actually build the applications using the financial data like the financial report let's imagine the 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 bank statement okay so we will be building application on top of the bank statement okay company's bank statement data We'll be building applications using the databases. Like, okay, what are the databases that we can use, right? So me, someone else is trying to join. Let me see. You know me. Okay, and then uh, we'll also learn different other techniques as I was talking about, and then uh, like the different other use cases, okay? So like the invoice use cases, how to find the duplicate invoice if your vendors are giving, uh, sending the invoices into different different channels, how to actually consolidate the things so that you will not ending up paying more to the vendors or suppliers, how to find out the duplicate invoices. How to re how to find the recommendation? I mean, what are the, what are the recommended uh, customers that you, you wanted to, uh, run the advertisements for to sell your product, right? The recommendation engine, also vendor recommendation. So from whom we should, from whom please mute yourself. Okay. 
Okay, so like you have different different suppliers for to to get different product for your uh, company, right? Who is actually supplying the product in optimal price? Who can supply within time? And so many other parameters. We will be building the recommendation system, vendor recommendation systems. And also the some HR use cases like the, the resume scanning, right? So you have seen the AT, ATC, right? Uh, or something like that, right? So uh, we'll try to find out like what is the best match for the particular job role okay, out of let's say like 50, uh, 50, 60 CVs, right? What are the best matches uh, for a particular job role? So those are the use cases we'll try to learn there. And not only that, also we'll try to learn how to anonymize the, the data, okay? Because uh, again and again, the security scenarios, the security questions will be coming into picture. Let's imagine the scenarios that are having the data Copy uh, data copying use cases like uh, many times it happens that you are copying your production data to quality landscape, right? It happens, right? The production uh, refresh, you know, call it. So instead of directly copying the data as it is from production to, to quality, how we can augment and anonymize the personal information like the customer information, customer sensitive information, the vendor sensitive information, bank sensitive information, the finance sensitive information, augment it, anonymize it, and then putting it into the quality system. Okay, so those are the things we will be learning there. And uh, of course, like at the end, after building the application, how you will be deploying your application in a production grade landscape. Those are the things you'll be learning throughout our sessions. So that's it guys, as of now for today, so if you have any question, you can take it. Otherwise, see you there in the actual session, starting probably 14th of this month. Um, part that it's a weekend course or weekday course? 14 the Tuesday, right? Oh, is it? Is it? Let me see. Oh, is it 14? Okay, no, no, not 14. It will be 11th actually. Oh, okay. okay. So, so you were talking about invoice duplication and all right. So it means like we are integrating with SAP S4 system, is it? I'll say less. Yeah. Uh, yes, no. So of course you can do all those things, but I believe you know how to call the APIs and all. So we have to restrict ourselves at a certain level. Of course you can do it. So what we'll do is let's say that particular use case, the invoice uh, duplicate case use case. So let's say you have all your invoices in a directory. You pick up the invoices from that directory and try to find out the duplicate invoice to remove the duplicate. Okay. Okay. So and after that, you can actually integrate this scenario to your actual S1 system or whatever the system that you want. Okay. Okay. Integration part is yeah. not very much important here. The very okay. much important in how to build applications using the Gen AI using LLM. Okay. Okay. So uh, finally, like SAP AI is a service in BDP. Uh, I hope so. Uh, the deployment part, like do we develop any? I mean, uh, it's a okay, curious okay. Good yeah. question. Good question. Let me interrupt you. OK, so I forgot about it. So the things that you have seen, I was just showing to you here, right? As part of this AI Launchpad AI core. Probably many of you will not be able to use this because this is a paid service. OK, so uh, Probably, I, 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 I was just trying to show it to you, right? So it 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 associated with some cost, and not only for this one. Okay, if you just go to this discovery center. There are a couple of reasons that why we are learning not only SAP, but also outside different things um outside of sap okay which is also relevant whatever the technology that sap is using in their ai core and ai launchpad okay. so this is the ai okay so if i just search ai so ai core okay so although this is available in the free tier but i don't think like uh you can create a free tier account nowadays because i think 
So if you stop it, if you are already having a free tier account, then it's fine. But if you go to this uh, pay as you go, so this is having some cost associated with it. Okay, so like I was talking about like this, and also if you just go to this pay yeah, launchpad, and and also SAP, I don't know why SAP is doing that, that thing. So for the even the free tier also, you will not be able to do anything. Okay, so why I'm saying like that, and here you can see this is actually a huge cost actually. Okay. So in the free tier, SAP is not, SAP is just giving you the flavor, what are the things that are available and all. You will not be able to do anything, okay? So let's say like this uh, AI core, okay? So if I will be using this AI core, and if I go to this AI core, we do have three options, the free tier, the standard, and extended. If you are not using extended, which is a little more cost for, for block size, so you will not be able to do it. If you are getting these things from your company, then absolutely you can do the practice. Uh, but, uh, and, and you can see I am also using the extended extended plan for this AI code, okay? So it is also having cost associated with it. So, but as I was, uh, I was talking about these things, SAP is just giving some wrappers. At the end, it is actually using the, the base model, the foundation model is uh, outside, okay? And also uh, the technology, like the RAG, okay? And also uh, the framework, like LangChain, it is also from the outside itself. So definitely, you have to learn all those things for sure. And uh, although we'll be focusing some part of our use cases, using this AI core, AI launchpad, maybe like 20% of it, uh, but 80% of it will be building our application out, outside. But technology is same, okay? Technology is same. That's the thing I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, repeating again and again. So the foundation model, okay? SAP is just giving you the options to actually use it through SAP, okay? But so these are the foundation model, like this open AI. You can go to the open AI, then you can create your account, you can put your credit card, and you can use their APIs, okay, you will see those things. And you can you can use LangChain to actually call the OpenAI APIs and so on, like we were also doing and uh, creating applications. So I would say like Weber will be able to actually get into this AI Launchpad, definitely they can do it. If they will not be able to do it, they can follow my course. They will have a good idea how to do it, and of course, 80% of the sessions will be actually using the actual technology techniques and uh, the mechanism outside of this uh, AI launch site. Got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, any more questions before we close? Uh, the session? Partha, can, you, can we have one session where we can call an, uh, let's say, an API? in line chain and then we can create a custom application on top of it i mean it's just a suggestion can you just see uh, the line chain is calling an api and then we can do that manipulation and create an application out of it of course that's the reason so for the last one and a half hour i was trying to explain everything right so whatever the things we'll be doing it is through line chain if it is even sap ai code that is also line chain if it is outside sap ai code that is also line chain Everything will be through LangChain itself. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, my point is LangChain is calling one uh, service, say uh, one OData service or some other service it calls, and then we can we can create an application. Correct. Just correct. For that we have to build agents. Okay, we have to build agents. So we, that's the reason probably we have seen that I was talking about the agent as well, right? Somewhere here. Yeah, right. So LangChain agents, LangChain agents. So there will be actually calling different, different things. Because to build a complex application, you have to use uh, different API calls, right? You have to do different functions, right? So definitely we will be doing those things as well. Okay, but Arthur, I have to take it. care of everything. So that's the reason we start from very basic, of course. How many of you, started or have knowledge on Python? 
if you just raise your hand, that will be helpful for me. Only two, guys. Oh no. Yeah, only two, right? Right. Okay. So that's the reason we have to start from the very basic level. Okay. And believe me, right? So it is not so hard, and also it is very important to learn okay, going forward. So that's the reason. But and AGI, AGI is also happen happen in Python itself. No other option. No way, guys. Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, what about the payment? Like, so I have not received any notification on the payment. How and what? Uh... Okay, so um, I was thinking to start from the next week itself. Uh, that is so for uh, the plan is. So it we already have uh, this course listed here. Okay, our courses. We already have this course listed here in our course and one more important thing to actually help you guys okay so whoever is is part of this level three level four okay whoever is already part of this level three level four they will get a discount special discount for this okay okay and why because of in a couple of reasons. For those guys, I have to spend less time for those guys. Okay. I don't have to actually guide you from very basic level because you are already kind of like as per my knowledge, you in in that level that you will be able to get the things easily. Okay, so this is one thing. And another thing, I will not take more than Eight to ten folks in a particular batch. Because this time I wanted to make it as a real interactive training. That means if something will not work, and that that will definitely happen. Because in Python, whenever you will be doing the things in your local machine, you will face lots of issues. I should be able to solve all those issues. That's the reason I will not take or allow eight to ten folks in a particular batch. Okay. So if I have to split the batches, I will do it, but I will not take more than eight to ten folks in a particular batch. Yeah, please go ahead. Anything else, guys? If nothing else, then talk to you soon. If you have any query, feel free to post either in my email or you can ping me in WhatsApp. I'll try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you for that.